but yeah. the game hasn't fully loaded. Now it's loaded, now see? There we go. We got some activity there. Okay, so what I'm trying to break down to you right now is if you don't see the timer of 210, 210, and then the 30 at the bottom, that the, all the players haven't fully loaded. Well, I was loaded in too. I'm talking about something a little bit different. <laughs> well, the thing you need to talk about, I think, is do we do we care to talk about what happens right now in this phase of the draft? Something that some people might not have seen because they don't do this thing in their games. They play all picks. Yeah. Okay. So we've got captains mode here, and this is going to be something new for some of these players. And these bands are going to be really important because it's going to kind of uh, instigate the way that the game is going to play out. So with Dank Eggs banning out Shadow Demon. Um, that's going to remove a lot of this illusion meta type nonsense that you're going to find with uh, characters like Terrorblade and Luna are probably the biggest examples of that right now. Yeah. And uh, the banning out of Lone Druid from Tango Wango is a smart choice in terms of him having this annoying sniper type pr uh, presence. Um, but what we have here for this game contextually compared to other previous installments is that we gave both teams a little bit of time to not only discuss a little bit of pick theory type operation, but uh, also be able to engage with the enemy team to acquire Dota buff stuff so that they can go into the games a little bit more intelligently for how they would do picks and bans to make it be a higher success rate for both teams to have a good game. Um, so I guess that's a little bit of a spin on how we kind of roll things out with today, though. Yeah, with that being considered and uh, talking about the bands, you see examples of both kind of bands that you would normally find in the first phase. You see um, uh, meta bands like you were talking about, the Shadow Demon, the Slardar, and the Lone Druid stuff that are really prevalent in the meta. If you look at statistics, they're considered Tier 1 heroes, which, to my understanding, tiers in Dota are generally categorized by um how often heroes are picked or banned or picked and banned or banned which is um how much they are uh, contested and then you have clockwork which is called a comfort band or a target band which is uh to ban a specific hero which isn't specifically pre uh, prevalent in the meta but targets a specific player on the other team Ten tongue twister over now, I think one of the interesting things that we're seeing here is the type of teams that we have. Uh, whereas Tango Wango is a full five stack team that has been playing together for a while. So they're going to have an added layer of communication that we would hope to expect. And uh, Team Dank Ganks is a five stack that is composed of pubs players, basically. And um, it's a pug game for them. It's a pug game for them, but for Tango Wango, it's a scrim. So it, each of these groups are kind of going into it with a little bit of a different sort of headspace around it. And I like that because Tango Wango is going to be looking at this as a legitimate practice source that they're going to hope to look and improve on and off of. So with that, yeah, with that being said, if, you like, if you're looking at the first phase, you have uh, Gank Gank, like you said, they're the pug group here, the pickup game group. And they just automatically ask their, what is presumed to be their best player on the team. Who do you want to play? He says Invoker. That's something you don't typically see. You don't typically draft your mid for we're assuming this is going to be a mid. But what that uh, what that allows Tango Wango to have is a counter pick towards it. And even though it's Invoker, there's still things to counter it, such as Nick's Assassin. Something that um he can sit in the middle of the spells. Uh, he can sit in the middle of meteors. He can stand in front of a tornado, stand in the EMP, and throw up his fight carapace. And it'll it'll set up a, like a chain of stuns that you put on Invoker. So up, I think part of the reason why they did that Nyx ban off the get-go is they knew that Invoker was going to come because of the amount that he hyped up his level of playstyle for Invoker versus others. Um, now they, they, they picked the Nyx second. They picked it. Uh, they picked Invoker first. Not well, right no, no, no. I'm saying like Tango Wango knew that they were going to have to preemptively be drafting into an Invoker because they didn't ban him with how much we as casters to them were emphasizing that because we didn't have uh, relevant Dota buff information for him. But um, aside from that, uh, what I, I would find from I don't play Naga Siren on the uh, Radiant, who is going to be playing on the Invoker, is that his level of skill ranges dramatically across like three or four core heroes that he plays uh, compared to basically everything else. 
So uh, for him getting one of those characters, we're going to see a higher level play style from him. And part of that is going to be just because he's playing difficult heroes that have high mechanical skills that come with it. Because some overt game theory type things that you would expect of higher level players, you may not find as consistently. And I only mean this as positive criticism um, because Team Dankanks, their MMR spread is going to range from, um, you know, so I don't play Naga Siren is 4.8 on his invoker spamming account. Whereas if you're going to look at his play style on most other characters, you would say that he's a mid 3 to low 3k player, to be quite honest. So what you're saying is he's a button monkey. Basically, for Invoker where especially. From, yeah, where I come from, he's a button monkey. So Don't Ban Clockwork is going to be 3.7. And, um, you know, he's he's primarily an off-lane player. Uh, BSJ Fanboy, I believe, is 1.6. All right. Uh, I believe Annihilatron is 3.1. I didn't hear the number. Yet. Annihilatron is uh, 3.1. Okay. And Escape, I... Don't know who is the. Aren't you playing Let me check who it is on my end. Didn't I just like say that? Uh, I think it's someone else that's also like 1.6 sort of I range. Know, so MMR wise, it should be close to being balanced game. I'd say it's probably like a 2.8 average without. I'd say it's like a 2.8 average without actually doing any math. Uh oh, you still don't want to get the calculator. You know, you're making me want to get this calculator out. <laughs> I, you, at this point, you should understand that if I'm sitting in the casting Discord with you, one of the tabs you should have open, or one of the things you should just have. Just have open, a full screen for a calculator, all points in time. Have like the calculator on the monitor. Sorry, have your sure. phone next to you with the calculator. Oh, after the I'm listening. <laughs> Tell the woman in the background that she better have a calculator on her monitor just in case. Katie's gonna have to help with calculations on the calculator. Got it. Got it. Got it. Oh man. But uh, we've been kind of sidetracked talking okay, about uh, the dank gank. Right. Not so much about Tango Wango. Do we need to go back to the draft yet, or Five you want to talk about the Tango or something? Yeah, we can, we can talk about this draft. Okay, because I was going to point out that uh, right now, oh Silencer gosh. looks really oh good boy. because Silencer oh presses boy. one button, and he tells those two heroes on the other team that, press, uh, that use a lot of skills that they don't use skills. And it'll make Invoker want to really consider getting a Yule's or possibly even a BKB. It'll more than likely be a Yule's, but it's something that he might not have considered before, um, but he has to now, which will be a little bit of a hindrance in the itemization that he probably wants to do. You know how Invokers are. They want to get their Midas, and then they want to get their tag so they can press all their buttons. And then probably the green course where everything's off cooldown and other cool stuff. Uh, other cool stuff. Not. Maybe not so much a Yule's, but by having Let's a Yule's, when Silencer presses shit, R, it hits no, his global silence. He can Yule's and uh, dispel oh, wow. the. Um, hey, nice one, dude. The nice one. He can dispel <laughs> the. Um, <laughs> it's usually pretty good, but you know sometimes Katie does get picked up when she gets really excited. It, it adds character. <laughs> hey, it is what it is. Oh man, so I, I did did I did the cabulations. The tabulations are complete. The cabulations. The cabulations. I was gonna say it's calculations, but then I started to say tabulations, and then they got merged together into another terrible word that shouldn't exist. Regardless, Sky vocabulary. you're not wrong. Um, Dank Ganks is gonna be a, a 2.6 average. So with Tango Wango being a 2.2 team, um, this is actually a, a pretty pretty close matchup um, that we were able to nurture along. So uh, it should be exciting. Word. So we've got a little bit of wombo combo ult sort of craziness out of Tango Wango here, and there isn't going to be a lot of direct uh, counter measure in the laning stage for them since they only have a Nyx stun here. They're going to have to have their positioning be pretty good in the laning phase because Silencer isn't going to be able to disjoin anything, and neither is Warlock. Now the sustain is there, um, but this laning well, for Tango Wango... I don't really know how it's going to go down because I'm anticipating this Nyx being mid or off lane. I'm thinking it's off lane Nyx and then they have this tri lane around Lunar Blessing. I think it's really good, but um, with the way the Tango Wango tri lane, this presumed tri lane, the way it's set up right now, uh, Dank Ganks could run some kind of off laner that simply can survive because they're not going to get stunned out of it. Well, the only stun that's up there is um, Beam. Lucent beam, right? Whatever. Exactly. 
Yes. Right, so, if, if that's not on the table, if the Luna throws it too early to try to, like, get early burst damage, then the offlaner can TP away. So they don't specifically need an escape. They just need a decent amount of sustain, which, by the way things are looking with the Dank Ganks draft, I'm guessing that this Beastmaster would be the offlaner in this scenario. Not so much because he could just stay in lane and fight the three of them with the boars, but he can just hold the tower down and he can fall back in the jungle whenever the lane is pushed too far out. So what do you think about Dank Ganks lineup here? They've got a ton of push. Once Invoker hits level 15, he's going to have the double Forge Spirits out on top of the double boar from Beastmaster. Uh, Jakiro with the Liquid Fire as well. That is a lot of push potential to kind of take down any of those exterior buildings pretty quickly. Yeah, and the, the bigger problem for Tango Wango is uh, with the way their team is right now, they're, uh, they're ult-based. Exactly. So they, have, they have to be uh, really articulate with how many yeah, ults they use in a fight. Oh, ew. hello. That's a push strat if I've ever seen one. Holy jeez. We, we hit towers, boys. Hey, we're going to have Drow Aura for those boars. Liquid Fire being amplified from that. Forge Spirits as well. That's juicy. That is a juicy draft from Dank Ganks. Now, Tango Wango, again, as you just mentioned, they're ult-based primarily. They're not going to be able to sustain all of these... Uh, consistent skirmishes that dank ganks are going to be looking to take here um because dank ganks can afford to you know poke and prog and force these little fights because their cooldowns will come up and they'll be able to do it again whereas tango wango i mean aside from a lucent theme they're not really going to be able to bring in the type of burst damage or even proper damage over time that will result in a kill because Earth Spirit, Beastmaster, and Jakira are all relatively tanky guys, and I think that Tango Wango is going to have a hard time with positioning to be able to really apply pressure on them. Yeah, and then like we talk about team fights. Yeah, that was the kind of thing okay. That's that was a good pick. Yeah, because um, like you're alluding to, the other big problem they have is uh, whenever they have a five on five engagement, sure they don't have like the entire killing power thus far, but. They don't have anything to walk a drought. <laughs> I, you're going to have to walk through some boars. You're going to have to walk to a stone guy. You're going to have to walk through an ice path and a fire path. And then, like, this wizard throwing everything. And there's this chick with a bow in the back making... The giant wizard! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yo, let's not talk about Miracle from Dark Moon. I never beat him. He's too strong. Uh, yeah, I didn't either. <laughs> it's okay. Um, so Riot, please fix his computer rebooted for no reason. He has to log back into Dota. Okay, well, that's someone on Dank Ganks' team, so at least, at least he gave me a heads up on Twitch. Appreciate that. <laughs> I can't pause it, though. Pretty sure I can't pause it. All right, well, at least let's uh, switch over to the tabs of being in Dota and being excited and all that sort of have it. Yep. Uh, let me get your Twitter name lined up. Twitter's overrated. Well, I know. That's, that's really not. Twitter's the god. Facebook's overrated, IMO. Yeah, well, they're all important to have in some capacity. That is true. Is 2017. Social media is strong. All right. Well, we've got that all set up and situated. Um, as a whole, looking at these teams, which which draft do you like more? Because I think there's a lot for the Radiant to be able to apply early game pressure and then sustain that into the late game. And the Dire is going to be really just based on this, these level 6 timings and what they're able to uh, really do with their first run-through of their level 6 ultimates. So if they connect, then they're good. If they don't, then it's going to be an uphill battle, I think, from that point. I like, I like Dank Geek's draft a lot more. I like the Radiant draft because um, the, only, the only real problem they have 
is they're going to be hard pressed to take farm off of Luna, but the way they can mitigate that is to make the supports want to rotate off the Luna. Although realistically, the only place they can do that is um, if they run at the Dragon Knight and make his lane living hell, which it already will be because he's he's, he's going against, against Invoker, yeah, yeah, he's against something that's not melee, and he is Dragon Knight. By that nature, his function is to just survive in the lane. <laughs> if he gets far, like a decent amount of far, and he holds his tower, he deserves a raise because um, he don't need to be doing all that. Um, okay. The other thing that could happen Good. is they could just try to disrupt the farm of Luna, of Luna by having a dual lane, something along the lines of um, Beastmaster Earth Spirit. <laughs> And they're not going to be able to completely disrupt it, but just slow her down enough to let Drow get the lead that she wants so she can push down early towers so that they all, as five, can go push down early towers. Um, even though you can sit there and talk about how split pushing does or doesn't exist in the meta right now, in this game specifically, it's not the greatest thing for Dank Gank, even though they have uh, um, Invoker, even though they have a Beastmaster. Because Tango Wango has a Nyx Assassin, and that's somebody who, by himself or with a plus one of, is Harry. What else is I guess Dragon Knight would be a pretty decent Could plus be, one, or just a support really, something. would be uh, pretty proficient in going and picking people off. Well, I think Dragon Knight plus um, a rotation from a Nyx is easily a kill. Um, on And it, that's going to be kind of contingent on... Invoker having any sword of backup, but if Invoker has any backup, either Earth Spirit or Jakiro, you know, depending on the game, a Beastmaster with Roar, then I think it's only going to go in Radiant's favor because their disengage potential is much stronger and more consistent. And that's the thing that I really wanted to get to. It's far more consistent. They're not waiting on these big ults to save their friends, you know, dropping a global silence to you know, not get jumped on by the Invoker combo. And, I mean, even the Warlock with the Shadow Word, he's not going to be able to spam that to great success early on to be able to have the sustain in the lane that his team's going to need. Correct. So, and then, like, yeah. like talk, talking about Warlock, though, like, yeah, he's not going to have the sustain like we were talking about. Um, the, the unsung hero of Warlock, Fatal Bond, isn't even really great in this lineup. Or against this lineup because um, who is he going to find Groot in a practical sense? Um, he, he's going to find a Drow, but who's going to be standing next to Drow? Not really the Invoker. Um, Beastmaster, probably not Beastmaster, as long as Beastmaster is letting all of his uh, legions of minions hit the tower, or if he's waiting for a roar somewhere on the side. Earth Spirit's going to be waiting somewhere on the side. Maybe he'll find a Jakiro next to a uh, Drow, but that's really it. Um, we're on the other end of the spectrum again, talking about um, trying to close the distance and take away their power with the Drow. The only way they can really do that is if A, they get a um, Blink Dagger on the Dragon Knight, which he's going to blink in, he's going to stun. And then if they have global, they can go from there. If not, good luck, have fun, buddy. Or Nyx can try to walk in with the Detta, assuming that somebody on Dank and Ganks didn't care to spend 100 gold for a Sentry Ward. So, yeah, just like you said in a lot less words, it's going to be really hard for Tango Wango to put together something at any point in time with this draft because a lot of their power from 6 on comes from 3 long ultimates. And we're talking about like 2-minute uh, cooldown, 2-minute uh, cooldown, uh, 130 seconds for Global Silence, 140 for Eclipse, and 165 for Chaotic Offering. Well, I don't know how they're going to play it, play this out in the beginning, but I think it's kind of waiting on Mr. Jakiro Man to get back on in the things of Mix 2. So uh, hoping that he's able to reconnect. I'm hearing comments that it's something related to the Steam Network. So I don't really know what the full effect of uh, what's happening is. This is the problem of having Jakiro pickers. I'm a Jakiro okay. picker. It's okay. So I'm 
getting comments I gotta turn you up? You're usually, I don't know. I thought you were already kind of well balanced, but I could be mistaken. Eh, it is I mean, what I it just, is. I just turned you up a lot, so. Word. Yo, I'm about to ruin somebody's uh, eardrums, rip headphone users. I'm in there. You're up to 150%, and then I might have myself throttling my microphone uh, by 30% on top of it. Word. So, I don't know. Have you played Captain's Mode in uh, 7.0? Nope. Oh, okay, well. I was going to ask you if you happen to know if they have a strategy time where they can pick items. Because it's just dawned on me that um, nobody has items. And, I mean, that's the thing that happens in pro games, but they can press buttons. I would figure around here, if you could buy items in strategy time, somebody would have did it by now. Like, somebody in this game. I'd agree, I'd agree, yeah. I would fully agree with that sentiment. But it uh, looks like we're finally underway. No, Freaking sort of. Gone. Oh, god damn it. God, Jesus, words. All the excitement, guys, of a professional Dota game here with it not being professional. Oh, he's back. Yo, yo, yo. He's back. G? What? <coughs> <laughs> dreams are dreams do come true. No, no, no. <laughs> Even on Teach You Tuesday, this is not the dream channel. I'm sorry. No, we're we're into it. We're into it. People are people are doing stuff. They're buying things. You got the scouting sunstrike, uh, classic maneuver from an invoker starting off. Um, it also signifies that in the beginning he is going to be a quas exhort invoker, which is. One that's more focused on damage. He, you can consider him a damaging core, with forge spirits. Oh, um, he with has a global body. presence with a sunstrike that you just saw, and this is as opposed to uh, the more controlling Quas Wex Invoker. So let's give a rundown of our art players real quick. I will read off Mr. Radiance if that's okay. No, no, you do dire. All right, that's fine. All right, all right, we got. The Dire team, actually, Tango Wango, is smoked up. We've got Yugi on the lead on the Luna with Lava behind her on the Nyx Assassin. MC7 on Dragonite. Enter on the dra on the Silencer. And uh, Blind Spot on the Warlock. And looks like they're going to be running right into the Radiant. You can bring this down. Yeah, I want to see this happen first. Lucent Beam and running. the Stun from the Dragon Tail on top of the Nyx as well. That's an easy first blood. Out to MC7, I'm on BSJ Fanboy. Yeah, that's the first blood on BSJ Fanboy, who who was on the Jakiro, now he's back at the respawn. Uh, Nihilatron, I think I read that right, on the draw. Escape, playing the Beastmaster in the off lane. Don't ban well, Clockwork, who sadly got put on Earth Spirit, that's a pretty good hero. And I don't play oh, Naga Siren, playing the Invoker. I like that we got Escape as one of the names here. It's easy enough, you know. I like that one of our players here is named Escape. You know, easy enough, right? Um, whoa, we got a little bit of vision dropped by both teams immediately. So that's kind of hilarious. I wonder if they'll uh, have noticed that that actually happened for either team. Somebody had to have seen it from there. What normally happens is that um, you would have one of your supports TP out or really even walk out to the middle lane to put that ward out in the beginning because um, unless the other team is doing the same thing, you're very unlikely to find somebody in that area. So um, we've got Silencer already preemptively rotating to the bottom lane with Lava to try and make something more of this laning situation, but he's going to be zoned out relatively easily and bound, don't bounce clockwork, going in with a rolling boulder. Nobody get more right clicks in, but no orb of venom. That probably would have been the the grace. Sunstrike does a lot of damage. Not able to finish him off. Yeah, it's gonna make him drink that Gatorade though. And that all started with uh, Ender thinking it was a good idea to walk up from the low ground like nobody would uh, be there, yes. contest him or punish him. But so he walked yeah. up up from low to high ground with no vision. Very dangerous situation for him to roll into, especially with both supports off the map. 
Um, the scariest support is a support you don't see. And we actually had a kill happen in the mid lane against our Invoker with the Dragonite and a Silencer rotation. Yeah, I, I wasn't looking at it because uh, in my mind, I'm thinking, how does Invoker die? I, that the same here. That was my same sentiment. Yeah. Although he is level two, therefore he does not have Ghost Walk right now because he went Exhort first. And he showed him that he went Exhort first. So there's no way for him at that point to have Ghost Walk until he hits level three. A. So back to the bottom lane, this vision that the Radiant put out right now. Um, the Sentry is a good counteractive ward to place because um, typically the offlaner for the Dire is going to want to put their vision somewhere in this sort of capacity down here or up here as well, but in like a spot like here where you're going to get vision out on this camp. Um, so that's a smart thinking Sentry to be placing proactively. Um, but I think they should have given a little bit of time to think where the vision could be prior to committing that down. Um, and then this observer ward would probably be a little bit better if they moved it either a little bit more to just being directly in the lane or a little bit down so it would give vision over their jungle. But they're going on lava right now. A lot of right click damage. Just kind of zoning him out and his base regen is so high and with the poor man shield on top of it, He's going to be able to be fine in the lane and trade some clicks too on Jakiro. Okay, let me let me play the dummy between the two of us and ask you this question. How do you feel about Tango Wango supports right now and uh, their use of their time as compared to uh, don't ban clockwork in the middle lane? Especially since you have some time to talk about it now that we have Paul's Dota yet again. Sure. Well, I don't know if Don't Ban Clockwork is really getting a lot out of this. Now, he was able to be in a situation that almost resulted in a kill. Wait. Didn't they get the silencer? They did not, no. Oh. He got yeah, away, that's right. Yeah, the Invoker died because he died to a DK who I'm assuming walked up and dragon tailed him. And then the silencer came... From yeah, somewhere. he just threw on a curse of the silent, or yeah, arcane curse. Just stop changing names around. Um, but the way that I'm looking at these radiant supports is, uh, I mean, don't play in Cockwork, just kind of rotating around as like this safety net. And BSA fanboy now finally starting to pull creep, so that's going to be a good use of his time. But that's something that the Dyer was already doing from the get go. So I think the Dyer supports are already off to a little bit of a better start, and you can see that reflected in some capacity on the last to deny chart. However, um, as a whole, as we compare net worth, the, the drought is winning, but I'd say a lot of that's just gonna come down to just mechanical nature of the, the players, um, where, you know, practice makes perfect. And uh, if you're a little bit higher MMR, your, your MMR doesn't necessarily directly reflect your skill level for last hitting and the like, but, um, you know, just something to consider. But we've got some rotations coming in on the mid lane here. Dragon Knight in Viz, and we've got Blindspot and Enter who have both rotated here as well. And the Radiant have vision on both of this with their Observer Ward here, and now with this drop, they do have the counter vision. A little bit of preemptive use on that Dragon Tail, but they know that they had the vision now, and they were able to counter that out. Yeah, there, he was, uh, MC7 was hoping to catch him with, um, surprise range of the dragon tail, but, um, I don't play Naga, like you said, pretty keen to it because the supports walked up without smoke, so they're standing right in broad daylight in the middle of the night. If they smoked, that would have been an easy kill, to be honest. Um, yeah. it just didn't, it just didn't happen. And they have a smoke on the silencer, too, so it could have been within their capacity to do it. They're still positioned around Invoker, and he should be scared, but yeah, especially with Jakiro canceling his TP now. Oh my god, look at these guys. They're standing right next to each other. Did yeah, that well, just... With the oh, yeah, man. with the power of uh, trees and vision, they didn't know that. <laughs> Although I was about to make a joke about uh, our Jakiro not reading the Blitz Guide, because he was about to make a terrible decision in life. There's no other way to put that. Generally, when you want to... um. 
uh, TP in to defend something, you don't TP right onto it unless you know 100% for sure that nobody's going to engage on you. It's usually better to TP to a place outside of it and walk into it. Like, think of it like if you were on a SWAT team and you were going into a hot zone. You don't want to just land Top right on the Top lane, smoked up, blind spot and enter, pressuring in on Beastmaster from behind. Arcane Curse is out. A couple more right clicks is all they need. Yuki throwing out the Lucent Beam. Down he goes. Enter picking up another intelligence stolen. Oh, yeah. He's up to four. He's going to get smart. And if Ban Clockworks is a little bit quicker on the TP, maybe they could have done something to kind of help that pressure get pulled off of him. But now he's going to be in a bad spot because he's still going into a tri lane and his team isn't looking to really do anything to help him out. Our King Curse out on him is then he's going to fall down. He threw out the kick on Enter, not actually getting the kill, really low. And uh, he pinged that out, suspecting that there may be some vision down, which he would be correct. That's kind of one of the things to where um, having a second support like Jakiro, even if this Jakiro had a TP on, which he sadly does not right now, a 350 gold, support players buy your TP. Like, what would a level 3 Jakiro at this point really do? He'd have, he has Ice Path, which some Jakiro players like, some don't. But it's a uh, one second stun for 50 damage. That's not really going to stop three people walking under the tower if they had already planned to. Like, it'll annoy them at most, but it's not the same power as having, like, uh, let's just talk about Shadow Demon. But let's talk about this mid lane where the, there are four dire heroes here again. Yeah, our, our Invoker player not really able to hold his own right now. Doesn't have the vision down that he needs, and... If you're looking at how his skill build is breaking out, um, you know, he's putting emphasis into both Exhort and Wex, and I don't really think that's giving him the sort of lane presence that he needs right now. Uh, throwing out the Sunstrike on Enter, not doing a ton of damage, more of a tickle than anything. What? That was half a bar. <laughs> Doesn't matter, that's one Shadow Word. That is true, Shadow Word. And he's got a Salve on him too. Yeah, a little fun fact about Shadow Word for people who don't play Warlock in any capacity. It heals for, I want to believe, twice as much HP as it deals damage. That should give you some indication how to use it. Yo, what's happening over here in the top lane? Whoa, that rolling boulder. Not actually getting him entirely out of the fray, but didn't destroy these trees. So he's actually in an unhittable, seeable location right now. There's the Sun Strike on Enter again. That one's actually doing a ton of damage. And, uh, it's the same of hey, it's more reflective this time because he was in a dangerous capacity of death. But uh, Yuki taking down the tower and Alachon rotating back in here. Here's a boulder kick that lands on all four of them. But the stun goes down on the Drow Ranger. Meatball falling on two. Enter well under half HP. That burn may go down. He will fall. And now I don't play Naga Siren. He's going to need to be on the retreat. And Yugi has plenty of mana. Actually opted for the Lucent Beam rather than an Eclipse. But boulder will connect again and they're gonna keep them away for the brief moment we have a little bit of a death ball already going on the drought went down in all of this as um one of the byproducts of what happens when you fight by a low tower um it's their support's responsibility to have a sentry ward and get, yo we're trying to ice path falcons over here or hawks excuse me <laughs> but now when a tower goes down um and the other team has an invis hero aka nick's assassin your supports need to have sentry wards to immediately have a uh, true sight for invis units the drow just tp to the tower she's doing her job to some degree you know trying to defend the tower but she had no clue that this nyx was six and so the nyx tp'd in as well he was in vendetta and took about half a grip with vendetta didn't even need to impale afterwards it was a nice setup for i think a lucent beam afterwards Bless whatever took the drow out the moral of the story is sentry wards only cost 100 gold now they're pretty useful so I uh, wanted to follow up on your comments on Shadow Word versus and the amount that it heals and the like. So the reason why it reflects to healing so much more than the damage it deals isn't because of it being double. It's because that Shadow Word is a flat magic damage that is reflected as magic damage. So heroes have percentage-based reductions for that, whereas the heal effect is just for the full amount with no reductions. So it's a different amount of damage that you're seeing, but Sunstrike coming out on Silencer here, and a couple more hits is all they're going to need. Down he goes. I don't play Naga Siren, able to pick that up. 
You know, at this point, I'm kind of thinking that uh, Silencer just has some solar panels on his head. <laughs> For the Sunstrike? Maybe. Yo, check out this middle lane. Check out this bug. Yeah, Nylatron is not in a really good situation. Lava would definitely be in a good spot. To oh, he misses Vendetta opportunity. Wow. If I was a drow, I would have probably uh, squeaked myself a little bit. But another Sunstrike connecting on the Dire. That's going to hit on Blind Spot, but he'll be able to shrug that off with a Shadow Word. Um, so, full perspective again, finding out that, that comment on Shadow Word. It's 450 heal at level 4. Or wait, no. 540. 540 at level 4. So, if you've got that magic reduction that heroes are going to have passively, it's, that's what, 25% or something like that? You do have to have yeah, so it's 25%, so it's already going to naturally appear as if it's just less damage or more heal, and that's that reason why. Everybody's like, playing. It's, it's not insulting enough. Like, we can talk about this poor Luna who's wandering around on the wrong side of the map. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, she oh, fell really so quickly. My camera panned to her, and then it immediately switched to someone else because she was dead and off map. But bottom lane, Nalatron caught way too out of position. We've got the stun from Dragonite followed up with a Shadow Curse and Lava with that Vendetta initiation as well. And yeah. So those were two good examples of um, two heroes that. Yeah. Naturally, no, want to push towers like, at some point in time. Like, uh, Drow more so than Luna in the meta right now. But they don't have the vision game, around them to see rotations, to see if anybody's coming to pick them off. Um, nobody smoked up for either one of those ganks. They just walked up to people who were hitting creeps in their lanes and they killed them. So Dragonite just got his first big item, and that's a blink dagger on him. Oh, that's a pretty good one. So we're going to have that consistent initiation coming out of him, and I think that is certainly what they needed. Uh, to kind of pick up where their team falls off in terms of a composition as a whole. But, well, we did have the Warlock Golem dropped in the mid lane, and we did lose him too. But the pressure on the bottom bottom lane may have been worth it for them, because they took that tower in, in the meanwhile. Yeah, they took the tower in the bottom lane, then the MC7 came oh, up to there, the top lane. There goes ended. Jakiro. Oh, well, More smarts for Silencer. He's up to plus 12 now. So what you're saying is you should consider um, you should consider getting like uh, nah, I guess you'd still get four staff and stuff. I was gonna make some kind of carry silencer joke, but you still get like rod of atos, four staff, stuff like that on him because he's an intelligence hero, and those give you intelligence, which gives him a little bit of damage. Oh yeah. It also, also helps out. Doesn't it help out one of his skills? I don't play that. Here. It helps out his glaives. That his glaives, he, yeah. Is intelligence not, to damage. Which he does not have skilled yet, again, because he is a su uh, support silencer, so he's not going to easily come into intelligence items. But it is something you will find every now and then. There are a couple of, um, I think it's a niche pick in uh, European teams. Yo, top lane. MC7 was trying to run up on escape real quick. But uh, he couldn't get in rain for the dragon tail. Power overwhelming. Beastmaster going to be looking to try and get this roar out here. It does connect on Warlock. A couple more clicks and he's going to fall down. He's throwing out the stun on Beastmaster. I don't really think that's going to matter. Global Boiler coming in. And MC7 is now under a ton of pressure too. And a couple more pokes down and he's going to fall. <sighs> Magnetize does so much damage. But at the same time, in the bottom lane, look who has been felled one more time. Our, uh... Drow Ranger. And this is something that we would expect. Nyx just harassing Drow Ranger to no end with Vendetta. And the problem with Drow Ranger's itemization right now, aside from the fact that there's no real progression in her items, um, is, you know, after we get a Dragon Lance, that's going to help her be a little bit more durable, but that's not going to help her deal with a Nyx initiating on her. So... She's going to need something to the effect of, like, Shadow Blade, BKB, Blink, if for some reason she's able to have a sixth sense for when stuff's about to go down. Um, aside from that, I feel like this is going to be a difficult game for Annihilatron on the Drow Ranger if he's not staying grouped up with his team. 
using this precision aura, using their team's ability to siege towers, and we're not really seeing that team fight capacity come out of the Radiant right now, and I think that's what they need to do. Yeah, if I were to say right now, um, all things considered, since they are just a team of five people, they are kind of playing as five separate minds to a degree, as opposed to playing as one unit, which would be around their drought, not specifically on top of their drought, farming as five, but they would make some kind of a barrier that the Nyx would have to walk through just to get to where the drow is farming, you know? But, you know, I say they're not playing as five. They're at least playing as three with this smoke rotation coming out of the bottom. Excuse me, four. Yeah, they're, they're up as four, um, and they do... Naga is caught up in that as well, but... Oh, no, the smoke breaks oh. and lava was invisible, so they, the they don't have any dust. dust or anything. They've got nothing! They've got nothing! Oh, oh no. If I was a Radiant, I would be so scared right now because no one has sentries or dust. There's two sentries coming on the courier right now, but that's not enough coverage for what they're going into right now. Uh, yo, look what happened on the dire side, though. And look what they found. He's walking in the reward. Uh-oh. I'll play Naga Sire, but I'll play with Dix. Either, yo. Ooh, the, the Yules! The Yules was going to be enough. Of the, oh, they gets dusted out, and they're going to fall forward with MC7 with the stun. Great boulder smash on to five. With the Warlock Golem being dropped out, he lands a stun on three. Are they going to look to continue in on this? Earth Spirit says yes. He goes forward. Magnetize connects on everybody. He's going to go down pretty much immediately, though. Taking out all those hits from that Lucent Beam from the Eclipse. But Escape wants to roar on somebody. Lava's not the one to do it. He gets that reflected right back in his face. And MC7 is able to capitalize on this. Jump forward on the Drow Ranger and deal a ton of damage on her. And Beastmaster needs to continue disengaging. He tried to summon a Hawk for some reason mid-fight. Which was ultimately something that impacted his demise, but maybe not the only thing. And Drow Ranger blinked forward from MC7, able to take him out. And they're going to be able to continue the pressure in here on the fanboy. And he will get away. And I don't. No, they got more dust! We got to roll. Oh, the boulder doesn't connect, and neither does the ult. The meatball. That meatball. Oh, man. We got that Midas that we need to proc. Just a casual oh, self fuels. Yo, I think that was like to get the shadow ward off. Looking like sky out there with the Midas all cooled out or off cooled out. I just point that out because it makes you so happy to point out. Hey man, people go through this effort to get the money maker and then they don't use it. Feels bad, man. But now on a real casual level, we just saw three uh, three good examples of the power of having detection. Well, also and... Vision. Look at Dire Vision right now. They yeah. see here and here. That's two key spots to be looking at. And yeah, the Radiant just countered out one of them, but the damage is done from what that Vision did. Yes. And the Radiant on the opposite side, they, uh, they just put down these eyes here that is probably going to get countered because the Dire already had, already had Vision down there themselves. But they're relying too much on Justice Hawk, and that's a problem. And with this Nyx Assassin being invisible yet again, underneath this Beastmaster, and the Beastmaster not really having any sort of team to come and help him out, I think we could easily be looking at a kill here. And, oh, there's the initiation from the Vendetta. A stun, a mana burn. He could always just a, blink a out a if he wants to. That's a shrine. What's he talking about? Uh-oh. We got two initiations coming on him, and he's just going to TP out because there's nothing they can do about it. Uh, forehead. The only way that would have worked out is if the Jakira would have like shift queued Ice Path because uh, because he walked a little bit, or if the Beastmaster just happened to have a Stone Creep next to him. Realistically, that would have took uh, the Earth Spirit not using the Boulder Smash to begin with and holding it to stop a TP, but coordination. Yeah, kind of hard to come by sometimes when you again have five five individual people trying to make one unit. One unit who is going to yet another pause break. So let's get a full item recap on everybody because there's been plenty of items that we've just kind of glanced on being there um, and some mm -hmm. that I've wanted to kind of talk about a little bit further. Uh, one okay. of which, Beastmaster getting the Helm of Dominator. Yeah. Um, now, I've done this on him a few times myself personally, and I think it could be very effective, but I don't think it's being very effective this game, though, and I think it would have been better for him to just go straight into the Necro 1. Do you have any opinion on that versus 
the other situation that I've just presented. For the little bit of Beastmaster that I've seen, which I want to say has been elimination mode, um, right now, Helm is getting picked up a lot more just because of the, the versatility of Helm. You still get your creep. You, you still get to be Enchantress, mm -hmm. but you also get... Because um... like if you get a Troll Trapper or even like a Wolf or something like that with the Boars on top of the Roar early on, you can get a few kills and it definitely speeds up your farm. I'm looking at it from the perspective of you're going against the Nyx and you want to get that faster because a helma dom is you know 1800 gold roughly so that versus the 2700 of the necro one which i mean they both could directly relate to getting more kills earlier on um but it's kind of just more like speculation at this point i mean you could get more kills with the helm if you play with the team and you have vision as in true sight something that you would get from your Neko 3s, which is uh, much further on down the road. Well, then I guess the problem more as a whole is just that the Radiant hasn't been consistent with this preemptive vision on the Nyx Assassin. Yes. Boom, finally. Yes, I'm just looking at it more as the greater good sort of thing, I guess. Yeah, I finally got a turret down. Are well, cool. there any other I items you want to talk about, sir? Well, I... I really just like talking about hats, so I think that was one I wanted to bring up a lot. And he's got the Necro 1 back at the base, so that'll be coming out soon. Um, other side of the map, we do have the mech almost online for Silencer, has Headdress and Buckler. Dragonite finished up the Armlet, so that's going to be a ton more damage coming out from him. And uh, Big Boy Luna has the Manta online. And with that, they're smoked up. And they're going into the Radiant Jungle, and they're going to find everybody. Uh-oh. Stun coming out on Fanboy. He immediately gets popped. MC7 blink forward onto the Invoker. Silencer ult connects, and he's just going to drop. That's a double kill. A little bit of misplay on Invoker's part with that Yules. Trying to use the Yules to disengage on a potential incoming stun and then hope to quick play or outplay after that. But it really didn't matter. And uh-oh, MC7 invis under Annihilachon. He needs to take it. Yeah, he will. There's the stun. And he tries to continue the follow-up on here. But we've got the Rolling Boulder connecting in on him as well. Escape has a roar if he wants to. And whoa, Annihilachon might have just been a master baiter. And the, the push is still continuing out from the Dire. Fanboy throwing out the Ice Path. Does stun him for a brief moment. We could see a defensive Macropyre get dropped, but we actually see a roar on Warlock, and with him getting stunned out, they're going to be able to kill him, keeping him silenced out before any golem could fall. And, oh, the Sunstrike does not connect on Silencer in the good fashion that you've seen earlier and hoped for. They turn the panels off this time. Oh, that was just a... Uh... <laughs> It started off as a really strong move by Dyer. They smoked up, and they were looking at Drow, who was farming the creeps in the bottom lane, which is, if you were looking oh, carefully, um, whoever was leading, I think uh, the Silencer was leading, he walked past the Kiro. Um, breaking context and talking about MMR, there was probably a call to walk at the Drow because that was the only thing they saw, and his camera might not have been on, at him, uh, on himself at that time. Mm -hmm. And everything was looking good until MC7 was greedy. And just from the vision he had, it wasn't a bad play, but you have to consider that they didn't take everything down and there might've been people willing to defend the tier two tower, which they were, and in turn, they were just defending their drow, which is where we have everything turning into a mid tier one for the dang game. So I don't think I've mentioned the Nyx Assassin having the Blink Dagger pickup, um, but on top of that, the Point Booster, we're going to be seeing an Ags Nyx Boys, and that is probably one of my favorite Ags in the whole game. Oh yeah. It's pretty powerful. Ag Nyx up there gets Nyx an entire skill, uh, new skill set when he burrows in the ground and basically turns into uh, a fortress. Now let me ask you a, a slightly puzzling question. What do you think of the Vanguard on Earth? Well, yeah, but like, the I was not expecting it. But we got a meatball combo coming out on the Warlock connecting. Doing a good amount of damage. Not really enough to really finish him off. Silencer ultimate on the other side. Beastmaster stunned out. He's going to be silenced too. He does fall. And with the Shadow's Curse out on Fanboy and Analotron, they're going to need to retreat here. MC7 is going to be able to blink forward in a couple more seconds. And a couple more pokes, they might be able to take him out. 
sound stuff from clockwork. And uh, we've got a couple different fights on other planes happening here. Beastmaster going down. Enter at the killing spree. And now with the golem drop down on two, Invoker is going to probably go down, and that's a double kill. Our spirit really wants this. The magnetize is going off. It's doing a ton of damage. Warlock goes down. Enter. One more hit. <gasps> so straight. <laughs> no, so close. Pump the brakes real quick. Threw up the you TP. Decided he wanted to go home, and it, that was the right choice. But that was a buyback also. Yeah, that was because I was going So we had a buyback hoping for that sun strike. <laughs> and Enter's life flashed before his eyes. As I, uh, rightfully so. And, oh my god, do you see how much damage those illusions alone just did to Invoker? Yeah. Oh, baby. That is a woman who has a Dragon Lance, has a Ring of Aquila. As a style 150 right now, plus so. 63. That is some insane damage. And bam, there's the Hurricane Pike. So more mobility for the Luna. It's going to be even harder for the Radiant to look to just close the pressure in. The only person who's really deterred by the Hurricane Pike at this point, I guess, would be Beastmaster. But I don't think he'd be walking directly at the Luna. Um... I mean, some things that Luna could do is if you if you can sneak up on somebody with your Hurricane Pike, hold on a second. Fanboy, yep, he's getting destroyed. Lava Boy with that Blink Dagger, it, not even needing to use it since MC7 was able to drop that base. Yeah, I was going to say, there was no need for the... He was in this, just from Vendetta. But he did too. With that... That gives a uh, green light for uh, Tango Wango to come kick down this tier 2 tower real quick. Or at least try to. There's going to be you know, a little bit of pressure against it. Or a little bit of uh, resistance against it, if you will. But there's not a whole lot they could really do if they wanted to at this point. Not until the Chikiro came back. Now, why they're down here in the bottom lane. Uh, they're, they're cutting the creep wave because the... Beastmaster was pushing it a lot, so they want to try and take some of the pressure off the tower without having to rotate down there. So they're moving as a team to make it so that no one gets picked off. That is the key component. No matter what idea you have, as long as you do it as a team, it's more likely to succeed. Exactly. And they're moving as a unit, and they're playing smart right now with the vision that they have. Because, again, Dire Vision, they've got this right here. And then they're relying on the Nyx and whatever the Nyx sees. A Radiant on the other end, you know, they've got this Observer and that Sentry coverage, but they're going in very blind, and, you know, you can see how these fights are turning out right now. You know, we, we do have eyes on here, and MC7 jumping for it on Fanboy. Oh, Vitor and Roar, but that's in vain. Just kind of wasting it at this point. He tried to save his twin-headed dragon, but uh, the dragon has been slain one more time by the Dragon Knight. That's probably how he got his name. By killing dragons? Yeah, that would, that would make sense. Oh, terrible. I'm pretty sure well, he was a uh, wee not. squire when this game started, but uh, he was <laughs> squ <to> play tonight. <laughs> squire into a knight over the progression of this game. Because he's, uh, he he's hunting Because he's hunting a double headed dragon and wielders of the dragon lance as well. Yeah, and he's got the double double damage to go along with his dragon slaying. Oh, that's, Although they're not that's really going to use it. Yeah. <laughs> these also, um, these building into the I'm fighting against Invoker item, which uh, I really appreciate that being a BKB. Because here's a fun tip if you keep getting your ass kicked by Invokers, probably because you did not get a BKB and he casted 5 million skills on you, there is an item that mitigates a lot of the stuff that comes from it. But bottom lane, we've got the Radiant trying to group up around this tower to do something about it. Invoker did just pick up the Blink Dagger, so maybe that'll be the saving grace that they need for this fight. However, we have the Necro from Beastmaster that up to level 3. I don't know if that'll be enough to really help them defend this tower. But at least the high ground defense, they won't have to worry so much of what the chaos of the Nyx will unfold. I mean... My question is, what are the Necros really going to do when Luna calls her two friends? It's true, I know. They're legs. gone. They're gone immediately. That could backfire for Luna at some point. Do, right do, now, probably not. 
if the illusion skill necros does the illusions die the illusions die oh okay then yeah she's fine she don't care about that assuming that you know that's how it goes and it very well likely may um but uh earth spirit is actually going for a blade mail now after the vanguard so really looking to invest efforts into self-preservation um i it's self-preservation i think of it more of he's trying to be the literal frontline tank standing in front of a drow standing in front of an invoker uh it's true as, he doesn't have a ton of control like once the fight breaks out after he uses his two spells yeah but i was gonna say this is uh as opposed to your typical earth spirit that you find who gets a uh, mobility really heavy in the blink force um just so they can move around in position and get the big stone kicks at will or the big pulls for the silences, so on and so forth. Invisibility. Nick Assassin's only 100 gold away from this Blade of Alacrity. Uh, but the biggest problem is he's pinned in this Rose Pit right now, and they might know this blind is just walking up with this. It's the Hawk. Yeah, well, the thing is, they just put down the Sentry Ward because they saw Blind pick up an Invis rune. So even if they didn't see lava, it's not like he could have just walked out in Vendetta as long as they were staying on top of the um. Well, Beastmaster had Hawk Vision on him anyway, though. That's what I'm saying. Into the Roche Pit right here. It yeah. actually does seem. Yeah. I didn't know that. I don't play Beastmaster. Who plays that oh, hero well, now? That Hawk's like still really, really good. His day vision is like on par with an Observer Ward almost, um, except flying sight, um, and his nighttime vision. Although has been reduced a few times over time, still very um, reputable. And it's free. So can't beat free. Yes, you can by not playing Beastmaster right now. Alright, whatever. You're just a hater of the Beastmaster. Who, who plays that hero right now? Tell me. He's still fun. Yo, man. Nick's He's axe is going to be more fun, though. Uh-oh, yeah, you know they're smoking up this right game. on into this gank. They have no eyes on this. Clockwork gank, gank. getting that stun off on four of them here. Invoker trying to deal out a ton of damage here. We got the Macro Pyre and Deafening Blast connecting on everybody. Silencer Ultimate just a little bit too late. Luna using the... <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> Luna uses her ult. Her... <laughs> God, I don't even... You're making me lose it. Oh, oh man. They followed up on him, but uh, Dragon Knight will be able to get out of the fray. Nyx was able to deal a pretty good amount of damage, but although not really ever being a focal point in that fight, um, just kind of sitting off to the end, throwing out his spells and sitting underground. So that's the double-edged sword of being an Ag's Nyx, and uh-oh, they found him with the Necro Warriors. Not able to continue the pursuit on the high ground on that, though. With the red one to be specific, which is the Warrior, because the, the Archer does not give vision. Correct? Bingo, correct. Okay. Yeah, that entire that entire body montage, that was not a fight, was um, kind of sad how it panned out because that entire thing could have been just completely mitigated. Hold on. Whoa, Inter that's stunned on the high ground. Sunstrike connect, but the mech will save them for now. And they're continuing this siege of the high ground and doing tons of damage in a brief amount of time. We're seeing this huge synergy of the alacrity. On top of the Drow, with the Drow Aura, and we're finally seeing this bonus damage with Jakira with the Macro Pyre and Liquid Fire coming out, because plus 64 damage on top of my Liquid Fire, yes please, thank you very much. And this Shrine is going down very quickly too. Yeah, one of the, um, the, one of the big changes of 7.02 in a pretty textbook strategy, as soon as you hit a tier 3 tower, as soon as you take down a tier 3 tower, you start taking down the shrines. Um, you're probably going to get the one on the way out if you take the bottom lane like you just saw. Um, the key one you care about is the top one, though, because that is the closest shrine yeah, that's your to the Roshan shrine. pit. Tier 2s don't matter anymore for those. Tier 2s really don't matter at all. Uh, I mean, okay, yes, they do. Let's be real. Um, yeah, they, but in the, been the, the scheme of themes, they've been reduced, reduced in worth and value. Well, they still have the 7.0 merit of making formations around camps but if you take camps away and just look at their uh literal position then yeah tier twos have been reduced back to uh some of them are completely worthless such as the um dire tier two bottom 
So Radiant Vision right now, they have eyes on the bottom rune. They've got their Hawk on the Roshan pit, and, you know, they're grouped up. Looking like they want to take Roshan fight right now, and they don't have any specific vision on the on the dire. Um, yeah, although a little have... bit of stuff that they could have seen around the bottom ward. I do like their position. But they're running though. blind. I like their position though, the radiant position, because like you said, they're postured up to take Roche. And if they see, like, if they see Luna walk down to take those creeps for whatever reason, that gives them the green light just to go into the Roche pit. And they they know they'll have a little bit of time before she responds. Oh, Beastmaster and Fanboy down. smoked up, going into the pit. Blind spot nearby. MC7 is in Viz right now. And Lava's going to look and go right on in here. And oh, no, they know about it. Oh, they get the stun out on him. But with the Silencer Ultimate and the Warlock Golem coming out down. I think this might be a bad fight the Radiant, and we've got two dropping right now. Fanboy going down too. That Eclipse is doing a whole ton of murder, and that's a triple kill for Yugi taking out. I am not a Naga Siren player. I'm pretty sure the three important people on Dire Press are in, like... Well, isn't that how their team fights work? Yeah. <laughs> If they get all of their R's lined up before the enemy team gets their R's out, you win. Yeah, the only the only thing is now they have to take their uh their Aegis of the Immortal, which they just left on the floor here. That Dragon Knight. Um Yeah, sure. That that works. Take their Aegis of the Immortal and march down this middle lane. How you feel about that? The Aegis of the Immortal. Are you talking about my thoughts on your pronunciation of it being Aegis? I mean, that's that's what it is in the game, although I do like Aegis better, so... Yeah, me too. But they're going in on this high ground now, and Alatron getting stunned out, forcing him to have to use his Manta at this point to get out of the fray, and Lava being a great little lurker underground, just throwing out that stun incessantly. Jakiro is sitting really sadly at the bottom of this network chart right now at, at a, a, a sad roll six 2k position basically. Um, and uh, Earth Spirit has a gem on him though now. So yes. assuming that he isn't caught out, I mean that's why they were able to take even the extent of uh, not as terrible Roche sort of start. I'm trying to be positive about the situation. They died. I mean, we know they died. But they had a gem, so they minimized the loss by not all of them dying. Yeah, by saving the gem. Although, positioning was their downfall in that entire fight. Three people standing in the pit, away from creeps, grouped up together. Um, oh, we've got to disconnect on the Beastmaster. Away from creeps not being the biggest thing in the world. They were grouped, so they one person didn't get annihilated by Eclipse. But they were grouped up, so Chaotic Offering, a.k.a. the Golem, was like, uh, hey, three people stunned. Let me have this. And that was like, that was the icing on the cake. The turning point of that entire fight was Silencer realizing that there are heroes doing stuff, and he can do Global Silence and stop that. So what do you think about this Beastmaster picking up a Blink Dagger now as well? Um, and in his that... stash, he's almost got a mech. I'm perfectly cool with the blink dagger that's um that's kind of going back to an old school thing which still happens when you see beastmaster which is still important which uh gives him the positioning to blink in and initiate with roar which will go through does anybody have it yes we'll go through a luna bkb so if he wants to engage on luna and make sure that she has problems and everybody has to address her <laughs> they've been catching that. luna before she's got off her bkb every time so it hasn't been used yet Although she's have it for probably the last three team fights where she's died. Well, hey, in case <laughs> the planets align and they see they have the vision to see this coming, and she presses BKB before. All right, this maybe about just the last fight because I said three. That was definitely a hyperbole. The point of the, the fact of the matter is they still have something to go through that BKB. Oh, lava trying to go in on these guys here. Clockwork with the gem though. Good silencer ultimate. But now they don't have this if a real team fight breaks out, and that could be on the near future. Yeah, this is one of the flaws of Silencer right here. Is like, yeah, he saved his buddy, 
and he made them disengage with uh, global silence. But if you're not stopping a counter initiation and you're not getting a hard initiation, you're just using your ult to make them walk. And Dialtron going forward, doing tons of damage on MC7. We got the Eclipse and the Warlock Ultimate out too. Yugi on their approach. And now we got the Courier. The gem goes down. Two are also dead. There goes three. Oh my god, that's a triple kill. MC7 blinked forward. They wanted a little bit more, but he didn't get it. Three strikes, you're still out of this fight, man. But uh, it took three good hits coming from the R's again. Had our Global Silence, had our uh, Chaotic Offering, and our Eclipse. Yeah, and we MC7 didn't have BKBs. Oh. Hurricane Pike, though. Yeah, all those Hurricane Pikes coming out, and I don't know if it's going to be enough. Clockwork using his ultimate, Magnetize, doing tons of damage to both Yugi and MC7. But not enough heal for him to really look to re-engage on this, on the Earth Spirit. And he's going to go down Lava, being a pesky little lurker, just doing a ton of work. And whoa, the mana burn out on the Invoker. Yeah, oh, I love that about Nyx. And meanwhile, Mr. Yugi just poking away at them, them buildings. But they're keeping up the fortification, and Fanboy dropping off that macro pyre. Is that going to be enough to keep them out of this fight? Sunstrike mitigated between the two of them rather than dealing full damage to one. Hey, there's a gem here, guys. Casual gem. Well, he gets, he gets the tornado off on two, yeah. But Enter able to force staff himself away, and they may get the Warlock as an ancillary prize. But wait, it's two! Do they have the gem? No, not... Nah. It, uh, Lava has the gem. But we still. have the Necro 3. Alright. Proc right. way too early. What? They're still hoping... Oh my god, Luna with the fucking Ion Cannon. Did you just see the Ion Cannon pick up? Uh, the no. Ags. Yeah, Ags I see Luna. It now. It's like, why, why is this a thing? Uh, yeah, sometimes you just need to be able to shoot lasers from the sky. Because you're looking at this invoker and you're like, yo, invoker, I know you got the sun, but here's the moon, bitch. I don't know. I was going somewhere with it. That's where it went, and I'm, I'm leaving it. I'm leaving it. So here we are on the dire side of the map for the first time. Fatal Bond's onto a bunch of creeps. That's questionable. Oh, the stun forward from the Knicks. So dirty. Yugi using the BKB. He wants to use his ultimate. I can see the greed in his eyes, and there it is. Oh, shit. It is a very fast animated ult, but it was not a good use of it. MC7 stunned the hell out of that boar. Oh yeah, he definitely stunned that boar and Escape just gave up. He just, he just sat there, he was like, that's it for me guys, go on without me, I can't walk. RIP. And he just left, he just left himself there to stay there. Oh man. I guess Yugi. Really wants to get rid of this shrine before going down and taking this uh, top set of racks. Yeah, well, it looks like it isn't really going to matter too much because MC7 jumping in with that BKB on the Drow Ranger. Oh, that's a silencer ultimate used very early. That was early. just rude. <laughs> that was just rude. There was no way they were going to turn around it's on that. He just made sure. <laughs> he just wanted them to be quiet. And they're trying to back toward the racks right now, which might be a little bit of a mistake on their part because an Alatron is able to punish him. By dealing a ton of damage, and now we're forced out with this Gola Warlock Golem at a very inappropriate time, and they're actually getting a kill on the MC here, and with the Golem going down too, all these efforts of trying to backdoor down these racks are not paying off for them, because they're actually feeding off these ults used improperly, and then they're dying too. So if the Radiant are able to just get any sort of pressure or pushing out off of these poor ult uses then we're going to be able to see the, f the fight really go in their favor. However, that net worth is still 17k in dire advantage. Yeah, it is, but they could, like you said, they could push out two lanes at a time. They have bots on Invoker, but they're taking too much time, and for every second they waste, that's the second that the, the three big ults, the three amigos are coming off a of cooldown. 
I don't think we mentioned that the Warlock has his agonims. Uh, you kind of alluded to it a little bit, but you haven't directly mentioned it. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we saw the double golem, so, like, that's literally why <laughs> that's what Axe does. But right, Here's something yeah. big. Uh, Luna just got a butterfly. Yeah, I noticed that. That's going to be really problematic for the Radiant. I think uh, Drow Ranger might have a little bit of problems hitting things. A little bit? Fanboy is not in a good spot yet again. Caught out of no. position. Yo, wait, wait, wait. Blind spot. Blind... Oh, that's supposed to be blind spot skill. Not blind spot. Uh, MC7. Excuse me. He's got to live up to the lore, man. Of killing the dragons. Yeah, but with that lava, immediately in Vendetta, lurking, looking, trying to find somebody out. Oh, level 25 Luna with 3k HP with the freaking ion cannon from the sky. Yeah, she might use it. She might throw it on her, uh, her assassin bug. But he doesn't want to go further now. So, let me ask you this question. Um, do you believe that there is any hope for the guys in green? Oh, I was hoping you were going to go in a completely different direction with that wow. and it was going to involve some singing and i'm kind of disappointed but you think i want to hear your singing i want you to teach me something this is teach you tuesday sometimes singing needs to be involved in education for the knowledge to be provided in a better learning capacity okay that's all i'm saying um well, you can either sing a rally song the way that it looks like for me, for the Radiant, is they need to be able to have good split pushing to force the Dire in a position where they aren't able to be grouped up as five. Um, I'm talking a little bit of Invoker gameplay where he's split pushing out these lanes using Forge Spirits as a priority in the lane and, you know, blinking into the tree line almost as you would, like, uh, with a Tinker player, you know, so to speak. Um, same sort of dealio for, like, the Beastmaster across the map with his pushing too, with his boars and the necro creeps, just doing what they can to keep those lanes out as much as possible. Um, hopefully, you know, just doing opposite lanes. So putting pressure on top and bottom rather than even doing any sort of thing to the middle to just keep the focus as dispersed as possible. Um, to go along with that, I was gonna... Then boots of travel over to wherever a fight is breaking out or split push based on how the fights are going is really the end piece of that so beastmaster has boots to nope it's guardian greaves on the quick buy but invoker already has bots though yes, that is true. and i like and the guardian like... greaves pickup for beast really well he needs something to deal with this silencer ult because he didn't get lotus orb if he got a lotus orb then he could use that but because he's opting to go in this regen type thing where he's trying to help his team he has mech that has to be Guardian Greaves, because that's his near solution to the problem of him getting silenced. I think Lotus Orb would have been a better solution, um, but, you know, we're talking about hindsight 2020, and, you know, the Earth Spirit should have gotten this mechanism, all things considered, into a Guardian Greave, rather than getting that Vanguard. So I think that's a little bit of uh, a misplay in terms of costs. Like... That's how I think the income of the Earth Spirit should have been dispersed. Uh, real quick. Well, okay, it's not gonna happen. I thought we were about to see another slain dragon. Yeah, well. Although, um. Drow Ranger has a Scotty. That's an that's a near that's a near recent pickup. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sometimes uh, you just gotta always have your frost arrow attack on without using frost arrow attack. Except they stack thou though. I'm not crazy, right? Because Scotty is no longer an orb effect at all in any capacity, so you could stack them. That that is true. But I do like that um, Tango Wango went as five with one that split off to push out the bottom lane. That was the thing I wanted to point out when you're talking about split pushing, is that the vulnerable spot on Tango Wango's side of the map is the bottom lane because they lost your tier three tower in their bottom shrine. 
With that being said, if um, somebody on Dank Ganks, which would probably be, I don't play Naga since he has the bots, if he wanted to go push out the bottom lane while the other four pushed out top, he would be in the safest or the safer position because they don't have a shrine to flank him at. Um, the other alternative is if they were to push S4, if uh, Tango tried to meet them somewhere in the middle, they wouldn't have a shrine to fall back to. But that's something that might happen in some alternative universe. Right now, we've got Roche at half health. Sunstrike connecting on Yugi. Really doesn't Same matter. Difference. No. Yeah. Um, couple more items picked up recently. Nyx has the four staff and a Dagon one. Dragon Knight working towards the AC. You know why they call it a Dagon? Uh, cause you're gone. I don't know. What? We've got a Lucent Beam dropping out everywhere with that Ion Cannon Eclipse. Only getting one, and the Silencer Ult getting dropped too. And Niletron needs to get out of here right now. And Yugi trying to do something here, but we got a great Deafening Blast and Meatball connecting. Aegis is down. Luna disarmed as well. And I think they might be able to get Yugi here, actually. We got the Magnetize with the Blade Mail and the Glimmer Cape. And he's able to save himself for at least now, recanting that Magnetize one more time. And Yugi with the strong strike, it connects! Naga Siren able to take him out. We've got the Roar out on the Silencer, and Escape probably able to clear that up. And Blind Spot also separately getting destroyed. Oh, the Radiant was able to pick up a lot of kills off that and the Aegis, and this might be a tier three or more. And they're yeah, not done one, just yet. One of the big, well, yeah, let's see what happens down here with uh, Lava piecing out. Doesn't want anything to do with that. One of the key components to that fight is something that's happened a few times that we haven't talked about, because we haven't really gone as far to talk about, um, like, the different components of a team fight. But time and time again, the Warlock likes to go off on his own and try to single somebody out. And he doesn't really have the power to do that. And while he was doing that this time, he didn't have a Golem to drop on anybody, which was something he could have used to drop on the Drow to catch her quicker. I think there was a time for like a two or a three man rock. But by walking off and taking his key ultimate with him, uh, this time it finally caught up to them since he still has it and they couldn't use it for the control in the fight. Now, with that being said, they still have it for the high ground defense, but now they're having to make a high ground defense. 23 seconds still left on Luna, and... Um, uh... Fatal Bond's off on five in the mid lane. Something I wanted to comment on is we haven't seen enough hero-based use Fatal Bonds, so I'm liking that they're remedying that at least a little bit, and a lot of us being such an annoying little bug underground. And Invoker pressuring the bottom lane, forcing out a BKB out on him. They're trying to do a little bit of chip damage in the middle. And I think Invoker will be okay for this. The Roar goes out on the Dragonite, Escape blowing as much of his load as he can. And with that Meeple and Deafening Bass behind him, it will be easy for them to take out too, forcing out a double buyback immediately. And they lost both of the bottom racks. Silencer ult gets dropped down, and we've got the Luna ultimate dealing a ton of damage here. But they don't clear out anyone specifically, except the <laughs> Beastmaster at this point. Now, Fanboy is probably going to go down here. We got the Warlock Golem dropping down onto, and the Earth Spirit will probably be another prize that they claim. But the damage has been done. They jump out both the racks, and the two biggest concerns were able to get away. The Invoker and the Drow. Yeah, and if, um, if they need to, there are two buybacks left on the, the Radiant side. So it's not the end of the world that they lost some bodies there. Like you said, they took the entire bottom lane. So uh, I'd easily call that a win for them, especially with the way the game has been thus far. Yeah, take a look at that net worth. We were getting almost at 20k, and we've just seen a very recent swing back in their favor, um, bringing it back up to almost, that was a, holy jeez, that was like almost a 10k swing. I looked at it and it was just like, like it was just as it updated. I looked yeah. at it. Wow. I was like 18 is like, yeah, sure. Okay, whatever. Then I press it again. It's like, good load. That's a lot of money. No. Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. So we've got the tornado and the EMP getting dropped down on everybody, pushing them back. At least for now. Blind spot trying to do something with the upheaval. And we've got a pause coming up from the, the zoning upheaval. 
It was yeah. zoning up people. What this I yelled the, the the anger. That's well, this has been, definitely been like the fourth. <laughs> he stopped. <laughs> <laughs> what an answer. Uh, oh, jeez. Hey, nope. Yeah, actually, actually, with, with how this started, we we kind of can't joke about that, you know. Was, yeah, there there was a little bit of a little bit of fuel before this fire started, so yeah, we can't really joke about that. Oh man, what can we talk about in this downtime? We can talk about um, we want to talk about items again because there are some new items. You know what we haven't talked about, or you know what we haven't pointed out? We we talked about it, but this hasn't crossed. Our eye yet. The Atos on you know, Silencer? You know you, um, no, nah, I mean, that's, The Silencer that's with 44 intelligence? Um, I mean, they've been slaying, so that happens. Uh, Where are you going? There's also the I AC mean, on Dragonite. We have not talked about that, but since he is the frontliner and the tower hitter, one of the two tower hitters, that's very good on him, yes. Um, it's also I mean, I also, there was also that BKB pickup in the Invoker in the previous. Before the previous fight. That is true. Alright. I mean, there could have been we something else you were still alluding to. Um, yeah. We I mean, we've only got Octarine on Silencer. There's that. Yeah. yeah words. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know about that one. But nah, we talked about Beastmaster having Guardian Greaves. Look at what else he has in his inventory. BKB. Oh, wait. He's got double boots? He's got two boots! Sometimes you just need a pair of boots that way you have one for each foot all right but you usually get the same boots unless you're a clown well maybe he wants to be able to run fast and be able to purge silences off i mean in all honesty i still think it should have been a lotus orb i, I totally agree 100 percent. Um, i still think that earth spirit should have gotten that item uh... Glimmer Cape it, is just such an effective item on Earth Spirit because Earth Spirit has nothing to dispel the silence on himself. He's just oh silence roll okay guys, and that shouldn't be the case if you're playing Earth Spirit. That's that's my big thing here. Same sort of deal with like Jakiro for instance. I mean perfect world you're gonna have a Yules for yourself. Um, yeah. But I, I mean just getting the four staff at least isn't terrible because you can kind of get yourself out of that sort of nonsense. No, uh, here's my question with Jakiro getting a four staff. Um, if he positions himself pr properly, why does he need a four staff this game? He really shouldn't because he should be kind of like this mid to backliner on his team when his team is a group of five looking to approach a fight. He should be in the middle to the back of the fight, you know, yeah, not, right next to the Drow Ranger, basically. Yeah, not getting with slayed Invoker by in the the middle. Dragonite all the time. Exactly. Dragon die into the Dragon Knight, jeez. I mean, I am horribly biased towards some uh, Yule's Jakiro, like, insanely biased towards it, but I, I think he should have it this game. Totally think he should have it this game. Because, if like, like we're kind of saying, if he has Yule's and Dragon Knight walks up in front in the position he should be, or if he catches a Nyx, you Yule the Nyx, you take him out of the fight, or you Yule's the Dragon Knight. If you want to engage on him, you can engage on him. Um, Anybody else he catches with Yules, they're out of position and they're punishing. If uh, the thingy, if Global Silence goes off, then he can just Yules it himself and back up so that he can uh, he can layer on top of the tornado that's probably coming out. So yeah, him having a force staff, like, what is he gonna force? Like, if Dragon Knight wants him dead, Dragon Knight's gonna walk up and stun him, or he's gonna blink up and stun him. And uh, force staff don't save you from that, home. No, it doesn't. But you gotta be optimistic, I guess. Right, this is Teach You Tuesday, and we are talking about item builds and uh, talking about different options that people may have. I tend to talk more about the supports because I don't, I don't know what it's like to have money. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. I'm like literally allergic to money. Like this patch scares me because I have gold perks and. Granted, gold perks are generally a trap. There are very few times where a gold perk is good, and it's scary. I mean, Earth Spirit has a gold perk. Um, That's a trap. Beastmaster a trap. does not have a gold perk. Like, Silencer has a gold perk. About. Dragonite has a gold perk. Silencer is a trap. Uh, 
Nyx has a gold Nyx. perk. Dragon Knights is a trap. Nyx? Sil I think that's a debatable yeah. one. I think Silencer is a trap. I agree. Dragon Knight uh, depends how the game's going, I guess. I don't know. Because you don't always need the HP. And you could just use the GPM to help yourself snowball even more because you already are ahead. Bro, this game should be over by now. This is this is 7.02. Why we got a 57 minute game of Dota? <laughs> Hey, I'm just talking in terms of my logic flow for whether or not I would get GPM or gold. Yeah, I know. Am I behind or do I need more HP than HP? Am I winning or do I have something like an armlet that is su a super cool item? Then GPM could be okay for me. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just... And I mean, when you that. think about it, uh, in this phase of the game, it's hard for a Dragonite to still keep his farm up. And I think that's where that GPM perk really ends up paying off. Because he isn't going to be able to really do all like that flash farm type nonsense that you would expect. Um, out of like a Lunar or something like that. Meanwhile, in the top lane, his Dragonite slays an entire wave of creeps as his uh, Warlock gets picked off in the bottom lane. I'm breaking your leg here, man. But nah, like, yeah, when you compare, like, Dragon Knight's uh, 120 gold per minute at level 20 to uh, his 300 health, then yeah, you're right. It's kind of a what do you really want at that perspective, or at that point in time. But when you compare it to, like, an Earth Spirit taking 90 GPM at level 15 as compared to 15% magic resistance when he's trying to be tanky, that's when you start talking about uh, the traps of, like, gold per minute, XP per minute, um... Those are the two big traps that get talked about in talents. Warlock has a refresher orb online. Yeah. I mean, he was just down there hitting creeps, so he better have that. <laughs> well gotten, Luna ate a moon shard a while ago, but now has finished Boots of Travel level 2 as well. Let me ask you a random question. Expect a random answer. Okay, what do you think a moon shard tastes like? I want to hope that it tastes like a moon pie cookie. All right, real quick, Rush Pit, what's happening? Lava trying to go in here underneath that ultimate, and uh, Silencer ultimate actually on point for them to force a disengagement here. Enter trying to continue the pursuit on here. Don't ban Clockwork with the Glimmer Cape, keeping himself alive. MC7 and Yugi trying to do the Roshan Ooh. input, but now going right back in. Refresher double ultimate coming out of the Warlock. Double kill going off for him. Don't ban Clockwork and Fanboy going down. Yugi trying to continue the pursuit. MC7 blinking and stunning out a creep. Or no, that was an illusion. Hey man, that's better than a creep. That that way you can say at least I thought that was the real hero. When you start a creep, there <laughs> you can't say nothing to that. Dire structures are nothing they can do about this one right now. Uh oh. Whoa, good good uh quick fingers there to blink on out of that and to not get hit by that stun too. And uh, Warlock made the decision to go home and try to keep these creeps down, but he's down to 200 HP. Oh my god, he had to proc the shrine because of the damage he was taking from these creeps to try and clear off these this wave push. And it's not going too well for them, but uh, this mid tower is also not going well for the Radiant. MC7 using up that BKB early on, getting hit with the roar. Sunstrike does connect. And they're just disengaging. You think they're going to get any picks from the Radiant? No. Because they don't have any forward vision. And they can't catch anybody. So, uh, no. I see them walking in a base and making a, a try at the tier threes. But they ain't picking nobody before they get there. Not unless somebody makes a gross error of judgment. Possibly like our silencer down here. Nah. Wait, wait. Well, the Radiant don't know about any of that. They haven't seen him on the map at all to really make that sort of thought. Yeah, but it was the question of does he, for some godforsaken reason, walk in the middle lane, or if he walks around the back door, which is the right play. Yo, is he trying to flank? He might be. Mid-tower, taking a ton of damage. It's going to actually fall. And now it's going to come down to the siege onto the racks. And... 
The way I look at it, with Beastmaster pushing out the top lane too, this is the way that the Radiant want it. They want to split fight as much as they can and re-engage if they have to. Luna throwing down the Eclipse ultimate into the area around her, not actually being that effective. And I don't think this is a fight that the Dyer are really thinking through because the top lane, we've got the Beastmaster creeps going ham and a half on the base while the Radiant fight is going off on the creeps. Now, Yugi uses that cheese, eats that up, heals up, but it isn't going to matter because he's going to get just destroyed by this cold snap, and he's going to go down. And although they may have lost the Drow Ranger, it won't matter in the end because they're forcing out a buyback on the Luna. Lots too. Uh-oh, second Silencer ultimate, and Voker able to use the BKB, break that off of himself. And they're able to force a disengagement here, and uh, look at that... Mid bat. Look at that mid um, mid base. That's no mid tower. It's top. Fine. Almost losing the top tower. Just the straight beast master creeps. And oh no, they found him. I think that invoker should have been able to live off that, but he's probably gonna get forced to buy back immediately. And are we gonna have a fortify for the radiant if we need it? I'm not sure, but they're also ratting through these buildings pretty quickly themselves. Tornado EMP and Ice Wall drop. Macro Pyre in a pretty good spot for defense, too. And Silencer getting four staffed out by Yugi. His second four staff on himself. Is he going to be okay? No. Just a couple more clicks. Down he goes. But they did force out some buybacks for all these sort of fights to be taking place. And now that's another buyback coming way by Dire side. So Radiant now only have one potential person who can buy back, and that's going to be Beastmaster, whereas the Dire is still holding three on DK, Warlock, and Silencer. But the value of them even buying back is going to be based on whether they have an ultimate or not. So, um, you know, take their buybacks with a grain of salt, realistically. Well, the Warlock and the Silence is BK, you know, he can get a couple of stuns and he can reduce damage with Breathe Fire. That's something we've not talked about this entire time. Yeah, well, I mean, that was such a change that was kind of so subtle um, that is kind of worked into the hero that either people just either know about it or don't. Um, and I guess that would be something that we could glance at or over in commentary, but... Oh, jeez, hey, Analatron forcing out all sorts of fights. Top lane, stunned out. Eclipse, Lion Cannon dropping down. He's going to go down immediately in Lava. Oh, man, this annoying little bug doing as much as he can, but the Warlock wow. Golem coming out on mid lane. That is one drop. That is a second drop, and it doesn't matter because Beastmaster's like, yeah, I'm going to hit your buildings. Okay, that's the way it's going to go. And Earth Spirit able to use his Lotus Orb to great effect, stunning that back out onto the Dragonite. But at this point, too much to handle. Whoa, the Glimmer Cape's going to be enough for him. He'll have the Lotus Orb to throw on himself again if he wants to. He may live. It's getting very close. He gets the stun out. A couple more seconds, he'll have a Rolling Boulder. And... <laughs> Throws it right back in his face yet again. And he's really grinding on the edge, and he's able to get the kill on him. But uh, now this is definitely going to be where he needs to be careful. And what? He lives off that. MC7 shrugs and goes the other way, thinking that that was it. And he lives. What sort of 9k MMR did we just see there? I don't know. I was looking at uh, everybody walking down the middle lane. Everybody's kind of walking off in their own direction, doing their own thing. Oh my god, this is so silly. So Invoker is starting to get past the sixth slot sort of point. He has a Refresher and a Yules that he's been playing around with for being interchangeable. And uh, I guess we're going to be looking at something similar for Beastmaster soon too. Oh my god, he's got three boots! Beastmaster has three pairs of shoes. What in the world? <laughs> I guess three individual shoes, not three pairs of shoes, but... But he's only got two feet, dude! I don't understand. Maybe he just wants to have, like, that one pair of kicks that he likes to take out when he's styling. Oh, his Jordans? Yeah, and that those, could be the Boots the of Travels. Boots? Oh my god. I mean, the Boots of Travel, that could be the Jordans, because they got wings and shit on them, right? Isn't that how well, you get jump? Well, he's never going to put those in his backpack because um, then it takes twice as long for it to cool down. It's like painting racing stripes on your car. It immediately makes it go faster. 
And if you use like a Sharpie or a permanent marker, then that's really the way to go. So kids, if you're ever worried about how fast your parents are driving, just consider Sharpieing the outside of their car. You're getting sued. God damn it. All right, we have a 66 minute game of Dota. How did this happen? I don't even know. Drow Ranger's almost gonna have an MKB. Uh, she's been building that MKB for a while. But... I know, I feel like she should have had it a while ago. I'm kind of uh, confused. I'm not, because um, in all honesty, for the last three or four fights, this Drow's like, I'm gonna stand on the side by myself and I'm gonna stand and deliver with items that do not allow me to stand and deliver. And <laughs> she's got gold. Kind of like this. Oh, wait, never mind. Jakiro's got a buddy up here. Wait, never mind. Jakiro's gonna get rolled. Go the four staff, though. Oh my god. Dude, no, the Ion really? Cannon. Good night. You're going out of here. And that Yule is actually saving Beastmaster to some extent. Able to use that BKB one more second. He'll be able to blink into not the correct direction, but somehow miraculously. All right, is the correct direction if he ends up living. Who knows? I mean. And he actually had the Necro in the base at the same time, took out that top tower and then did a lot of damage on that Rax and then mid lane invoker trying to rat out on the melee Rax so all really a diversionary ta uh, tactic at some point just a ruse to make them take their eyes off of the prize well played by the uh the dank ganks i guess um, they should change this their net worth is almost 20k in dire favor still yet uh i don't know if i would say that the controls in their hands they mm, have so much entirely. strength but they're not able to really take these fights invoker does not have buyback though and that could be the big problem with this next fight and yugi's looking to capitalize on this those glaives are bouncing and down goes those racks roar out on dragonite you know they're going for gg i think so Yugi just stop dropping the run we're going gg Oh yeah, there it goes. They're going to be able to take this down really fast, and the Invoker's not going to be back in time for this. The double Warlock Golem down on this too, it's going to be way too much for them to handle. Somebody just got the, the piece of delivered. They got to get up real quick. Game's got to be over. 69 minutes. Dyer realized that they were finally able to just kind of just man fight them into their face and they took the power of luna finally in full force yeah this is a luna that um even though we can question some of the items that she picked up she had like double the net worth of the next person to her so she was uh she's kind of beefy she was kind of beefy well i'd say tango wango took that game pretty decisively showing a uh, very strong team coordination with their ult use, especially getting better and more consistent with their timings of the execution in the middle into the late and very late game of things. Oh, yeah. There was a couple times in the beginning where uh, everything was looking very questionable for them. But like you said, in the middle game, especially around some of the, the key roast fights, their, uh, their R timing was impeccable. 